In this topic, we want to know how contribution of zakat and sedekah can alleviate poverty. But before we dive in, let's hear some opinion. Understand about poverty. So, um, uh, poverty. Um, so I think my personal opinion. I think it happened when. Uh, what do you say? Um, there's a. Um, unfair advantage to um, most people um, sometimes um, the rich they get richer right and the poor the poor yeah that's correct um, I think but the, the factor will be um, subjective um, because it's advantage so maybe it's because of education or opportunities you know um, your family backgrounds um, those kind of things do you think Zakat and uh, Zadaka are an effective way to elevate uh, property? Um, I, I think it's related to number one. It's yes and no. Uh, because uh, I think in Islam, we, we don't have teachings like the uh, communism. Like, um, they don't have fair to everyone. They have like same to everyone. Like no one's rich or no one's poor. It's not like, because in Islam, uh, adil or fair is where where it's placed. I mean, um, if you're rich, then you have to uh, sedaka according to your certain rate, right? They are calculation yeah. on that, right? And if you're if you are poor, then you can ask for for assistance. Okay? Um, so it's it's not something. Uh, I mean, if we if we take the sedaka or zakat to to elevate someone um, from poor to rich, then I think that's a um, wrong concept. Uh, it will give a wrong perception. Uh, why do I give? Uh, why do I receive zakat but I don't become rich? So I, because it's not like that. Okay, what is your suggestion uh, on how we, uh, as a Muslim, want to elevate property? Uh, uh, I think it's a, it's a joint process um, work. Uh, uh, if there's any suggestion, I think we have to go, um, we have to, you know, uh, we have to make a sample of our past. Um, um, and again, I think number one, number two is still related because being a Muslim, uh, it's not uh, being being rich is not your main object. You know? I mean, but of course, uh, ulama say you don't ask or you don't do to become poor uh, like our Nabi Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. Because we will not be able to, <laughs> right? Uh, but we can. Uh, amal, we can practice uh, like dua or few amalan, you know, so that uh, we might seem poor, but our rezeki is super cut. So if there's any suggestion, is um, you do what what is uh, suggested, what is taught to you, you know, like um, perform your um, perform your prayer, you know, perform your if you want to do some extra amalan like uh, dua, you know, um, give sadaka more. That's how you actually um, get out from your um, poverty. First of all, what exactly does poverty mean? Poverty can be defined as a state or condition in which a person or community lacks the financial resources and essentials for a minimum standard of living. Poverty also implies that the income level from employment is so low that basic human needs can be met. Poverty-stricken people and families might go without proper housing, clean water, healthy food and medical attention. Now we go to one way to uproot poverty which is zakat. Zakat is derived from the Arabic word zaka, which means cleanliness, purification, increased growth and blessing. Moreover, zakat is obligatory for Muslims who are financially capable because it is one of the pillars of Islam. And the payment of zakat is recommended in the form of money, thus zakat will purify our wealth. 
Why is sadaqah? Sadaqah is also one of the solutions to eliminate poverty. Sadaqah can be defined as charity voluntary to please Allah. It is often given at any time to anyone and at any amount or anything including a material object. As such, there is an enormous amount of flexibility. This is an act usually done purely to earn the blessing of Allah and to assist other people. Here we have to know why zakat and sadaqah are important. It is important in Islam because it is one of the important institutions in the socio-economic framework of Islam. For example, the zakat is a unique instrument for poverty elevation in which the wealth of well people will go to the needy people who are in need. It is zakat is identified as one of the pillars of Islam, so it will help our socio-economic framework. According to one verse in Quran, the zakat is meant only for the poor and needy, those who collect the tax, those whose hearts are to be won over for the freeing of human beings from bondage, for the relief of those overwhelmed by death, for the cause of God and for the wayfarer, this is an ordinance from God, and God is all-knowing, wise. Surah At-Tawbah verse 60 Next, to purify our wealth and soul, as Allah has mentioned in Quran, Take from their wealth, O Prophet, charity to purify and bless them, and pray for them. Surely your prayer is a source of comfort for them, and Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Surah At-Tawbah verse 103 this is where we have to purify our wealth and soul from the evils of stinginess. Furthermore, the importance of it is to earn a reward from Allah. In Quran, it has been mentioned, The example of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is that of a grain that sprouts into seven years, each bearing 100 grain. And Allah multiplies the reward even more to whoever He wills. For Allah is all bountiful, all knowing. Surah Al Baqarah, verse 261. This is the easiest way for a Muslim to earn pahala by giving sadaqah without bad intentions. In addition, paying zakah and sadaqah save us from the hellfire in the hereafter. Even the smallest amount of sadaqah is enough to help us. As the Prophet said, guard yourself from the hellfire even with half of the dates in sadaqah. If he cannot find it, then with a kind word from Bukhari and Muslim. From this we know that Allah tells us repeatedly that even the smallest act of kindness or sadaqah is enough and we should compete to do a good deed even though we cannot see what value it has. Let's move on to what advantages of zakat and sadaqah we get. Giving sadaqah and zakat are two methods to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by doing so on a regular basis, you can improve your personal well-being and achieve serenity and happiness in this world and the next. Giving charity shows Allah that we appreciate the blessings He has bestowed on our life. The first advantage is it purifies your heart. Doing good deeds help you get closer to Allah and by practicing regular charity, you can improve your own well-being and find peace and happiness in this life and the hereafter. Secondly, by doing zakat and sadaqah, we can assist the poor and weak by bestowing wealth on them. Then, the distribution procedure is analogous if the poor population is large and only a few people dominate the supply chain. Zaka and Sirka distribution will have little impact on income redistribution. The situation is determined by society's lifestyles and the number of Zaka recipients. Lastly, through Zaka and Sirka, the needy are cared. 
These include widows, orphans, and the destitute. Therefore, what is impact of Saka to country with a non-Muslim majority? We always discuss that Islamic social security, like Zaka and Saraka, can be used for poverty eradication, but it is effective only in countries where the majority of the population is Muslim, such as Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and others. On the other hand, what happens to countries with Muslim minorities like UK, US, China, and others? In those countries, the government does not interfere mainly in Islamic law and there is no division in the government dealing with matters related to religion. There are only non-governmental organizations that manage and care about Islamic affairs such as Sakai. However, there are also countries that do not have NGOs to help and only expect local communities who are also Muslim to carry out their religious obligation without the help of Islamic institutions. Muslim living in non-Muslim countries require a lot of voluntary compliance which means people have to comply on their own without being forced. Since the country does not fulfill this function, it becomes obligatory for every Muslim individual to implement it. If they fail to fulfill the payment of zakat, they will get punishment in the hereafter. As argued by scholars, when zakat is handed over to an individual to manage it without government support, it does not run optimally. It is an obligation for Muslims to pay zakat when they have fulfilled the condition that a certain amount of property is either kept or invested and have it for a certain period even in non-Muslim countries because it is one of the five pillars of Islam. In economic terms, zakat does not change or only has a small impact on the national economy because the country with a minority Muslim population still has social security provided by their respective governments in the same mission that is to provide medical or financial assistance to the people. What are the problems and suggestions of zakat and sedekah to solve poverty? It is proven that zakat and sedekah system can reduce poverty in the world. However, why is there still poverty despite the fact that the zakat and sedekah system has been established for many years? In this session, we will discuss the limitations of zakat and sedekah system. Firstly, the amount of zakat and sedekah collected is still relatively small compared to the needs of the poor in Malaysia. According to the Federal Territory Islamic Religious Council and the Zakat Collection Center, the amount of zakat on wealth collected in 2020 was 751 million and the total amount of zakat fitra collected was 11.1 million. With a total of poor households in that particular year was 639.8 thousand households as shown in the Department of Statistics Malaysia. Besides that, there is also a lack of transparency and accountability in the management of zakat and sadaqah funds. Mismanagement and corruption have occurred in several zakat institutions, leading to widespread distrust of these organizations. Money collected through zakat and sedekah is not always used for the intended purpose as it is often used for administration rather than helping the needy or it's end up in the hands of corrupt authorities or religious leaders. Last but not least, zakat and sedekah funds are only short-term solution in eradicating poverty. It is because they are distributed in the form of a sum of money and will create a dependency on zakat and sedekah receipt which will not help them in enhancing their standard of living. 
Here are some suggestions on how to face these limitations. The organization fundraising efforts still have a lot of room for improvement, particularly in terms of zakat collection center abilities to identify persons who should pay zakat and track down prospective zakat payers. To do this, the authorities must shift from waiting at the counters to proactively conducting briefing sessions on the necessity of zakat for students, public and private sector workers, and police and military personnel in training. Also, the authorities should be examples in demonstrating how accountable they are in accomplishing their tasks to the public, zakat payers, other stakeholders, and ultimately to Allah. Moreover, the authorities will have to regularly give them financial assistance from time to time or adjust the way financial aid is distributed, such as supporting their children's schooling or sending them to the training center to learn specific skills. In addition, the authorities can encourage people to participate in wakaf activities. It is because wakaf may support them in providing basic facilities such as religious facilities, educational institutions, poor orphanage shelter and health facilities. To sum up, we believe that these suggestions may assist us achieving the first goal of sustainable development, which is zero poverty by reducing the number of poor households and the unemployment rate resulting in the growth of socio-economic in our country.